Another topic is the Egyptian unit fraction in the eye of Horus. The Egyptian unit fraction was developed to cater to practical problems of trade and the activities in the market. For this, it is essential to remember that a unit fraction is a fraction whose numerator or dividend is always 1. Ancient Egyptians solved their fractions using unit fractions based on the symbol of the Horus eye, as seen on the papyri. The image is the eye of Horus, where you can see that each part of the eye represented a different fraction. Each half of the previous one, in which the total was 1 64th of a whole, was considered as the first known example of a geometric sequence. For the fraction 4 over 7, the scribe wrote 1 half plus 1 over 14. To express the result for 7 over 8, we have 7 over 8 is equal to 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. How did this happen? First, consider if the given value has 1 half. Then start from it. So 7 over 8 has 1 half because 1 half is equal to 4 over 8. We only lack 3 over 8. Since 3 8 is not a unit fraction, think of a unit fraction that will equal to 3 8. So, 3 8 is equal to 2 8 plus 1 8. Therefore, the 2 8 in unit fraction is 1 fourth. Hence, the result is 7 over 8 is equal to 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. However, there are other possibilities where the sum of the equivalent of 7 over 8 can be expressed in unit fraction. One example of unit fractions for the simple division was whenever they needed to divide 3 loaves of bread among 5 people. First, they would divide the 2 loaves of bread into thirds. Each person gets one third each with one third left over. The third lobe will be divided into fifths. Each person gets one fifth each. Then divided the left over one third into fifths. So each person gets one over fifteen. Thus, each has one third plus one fifth plus 1 over 15, which is equal to 3 over 5 or 3 fifth. Ancient Egyptians seek measurements of figures given base and height using proper arithmetic operations. One complicated problem they sought was measuring a rectangle whose area is 12 and height is 1 half plus 1 fourth times its base. To solve the problem, the ratio 3 fourth which is the sum of one half and one fourth is inverted and multiplied by the area 12. Thus, the answer is 16. Base square is equal to 16. Hence, the square root of 16 is 4, which is the base of the rectangle. And one half plus one fourth times 4, which is 3, is the height. The entire process is similar to the process in solving the problem using the algebraic equation where we use width times 3 fourth length equals 12. Though ancient Egyptians did the solution without using a letter for the unknown. Egyptians have known for their pyramids. It was believed that Egyptians' pyramids are the first known structures to observe the golden ratio 1.618. There is a remarkable result of the rule for the volume of the truncated pyramid. A truncated pyramid is a result of cutting a pyramid by a plane parallel to the base and separating the part containing the apex. 
the person who transcribed one problem in the papyrus as shown in the figure assumed that the height to be 6, the base to be a square of side 4, and the top of a square of side 2. He multiplies the height by 1 third times 28, finding that the volume is 56. Here, 28 is measured from 2 times 2 plus 2 times 4 plus 4 times 4, and that is right. The general rule, which is volume is equal to the product of height divided by 3 and a square plus ab plus b square may also be believed to be understood by the scribe. Thus, it can be said that the papyrus shows mathematical tradition closely related to the practical application we have this day. Indeed, Egyptian mathematics left a legacy, and this had a remarkable impact on Greek mathematics. Many Greek intellectuals learned from Egyptians, such as Pythagoras, Herodotus, and Plato. This was possible because Greeks had constant trade and military operations with the empire from the 4th to the 7th centuries.